Hello folks, we're back again to review a, a four-year-old board game. <laughs> this is four years old, huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. This, was, uh, this was big time about four years ago. Uh, that everybody was trying to get you to buy this. Uh, there was so many videos about it. Like if oh, you, really? Yeah, if you go look, there a, was a ton of coverage. Mm -hmm. I remember this was the year that my, I took my whole family down to Simon Expo. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we even got our picture made, and it's got like a little Victorian mastermind, oh, wow. uh, little little thing around the border and stuff. So um, it was really huge then. Uh, mm. People were playing it. I I kind of passed it by. I was still more a little snobbier uh, mm. with, with the board games that I wanted, and I wanted to play more miniature based games. So I was more attracted to Rising Sun mm -hmm. and Zombie Side. Like I was about to get Zombie Side Invader the the uh, the alien zombie side, mm -hmm. and so I was all excited for all of those things and Song of Ice and Fire, and I completely just kind of blew this off. And I and I, I watched him play it and I thought that looks pretty neat, mm -hmm. but I, but I passed it up. And then I'm not sure if you got the same deal. I did, yeah. But recently we we both are on the Reddit mm -hmm. uh, board game deals on Reddit. Oh yeah. This is before we even met too, I think. The cheapo, the yeah. board game enthusiast cheapos. Oh man, they yeah. post some great deals mm -hmm. on there, and I, and what, what company was it that was doing? It, it was uh, I think it was on Game Nerds, and it was like it was under seven dollars. It was like ninety percent off. They were essentially just chucking it out and i think they might have been trying to get rid of their their warehouse uh they were moving from one location to another their warehouse things mm. and you were seeing a lot of these really big deals so they i didn't realize how popular this game was i'd never heard of it until that deal so they probably had like a huge stock of them and they weren't selling and then they just wanted to recoup something off of it well popular it maybe it was it was uh, the commercials for it were well funded, mm. so you could tell that Simon had really uh, had spread this game around all the influencers and stuff, and everybody talked about it for about three weeks, mm. and then I never heard about it again. Yeah. And, and there's some playthroughs and stuff from people that don't, you know, uh, make a lot of videos, I guess. But it, it's, mm. and, and that's fine. But it, it's one of those games that kind of blew by. It kind of was white noise at that time period. It's a really good time for board games in general. There's a lot of good titles coming out. And yeah. I think this one kind of got moved over. Now, I didn't take notice, of course, until it was 90% off. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard to pass up 90% off. I tell yeah. you what, for a $10 game, it's this is awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, great. It's an excellent $10 game. I was I very, well, I got this in a land tot. At, at, at Land Dice, mm -hmm. which had like one half a review from a reviewer, and he was like, it's terrible. Oh, <laughs> I was like, that's really depressing when you buy a game, and you go look it up online, and it's like, oh, it's just one person saying it's horrible. Was this a $50 game originally, or what was this? Oh, I don't even, yeah. I'm not sure, but I would say, I would say the price point would be $40 feels right, 40 50 yeah. bucks feels right. Yeah. They might have charged a little bit more right out the, out the gate, mm. and then like retailers would sell it to you for 40 and that yeah. was the good deal or whatever, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, uh, I mean, I could imagine games like this uh, being sold for $50. There's a lot of uh, pretty nice, they're not miniature people, but they're miniature buildings, and Simon is big about their miniature pieces of plastic and for $50 I mean I, I've seen plenty of games I guess of this caliber around that range but I would I wouldn't have paid 50 for it oh so Victorian masterminds is uh, the theme of it is you're mm -hmm. a, a Victorian uh, bad guy so sort of a steampunk bad guy and there's uh, I think five different flavors of us Mm -hmm. to be had in this and they uh and you're building some doom machine mm -hmm. some great big machine and there's uh, there's submarines and spider looking <laughs> things and and this looks like a some sort of four by four and there's <laughs> there's all kinds of different uh machines so you're trying to uh, you're sending your agents out to acquire materials mm -hmm. that you'll use uh you'll use to build your machine and as you do you get more and more powerful and uh, some of that power is represented by points and stuff at the end of the game. It's it's a abstract. Mm -hmm. uh, each of these tokens that you put down is going to have basically a different power. And uh, once you get a stack of three of these tokens, 
uh, you'll put one down and uh, the other person will and then you will again. Once you get a stack of three of these tokens, you'll flip them upside down and then you resolve all their powers uh, in order going down. And I think, what is there, five? Yeah, there's five between each person and they're all the same. So yeah. everybody has the same, they're agents that you're sending out on all of these whatever missions. And I guess, you know, it's a goofy thing because you've got these buildings that you're grabbing. But, you know, when I was just thinking about it, is that maybe you're not actually taking the buildings, even though you're taking these buildings off the board, but it's almost like you're robbing them. You're, you're infiltrating these areas because a lot of them, they're, they're just giving you resources that you're using to then build your, your master evil gadget, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, uh, a vehicle that you're using, I guess, to further your evil plans and whatever else, uh, whatever other endeavors you're doing. As That's you an interesting, around. I hadn't thought of that. So yeah. maybe like you're not really stealing this, but you're taking the resources inside of it, which equates to some bolts. Mm -hmm. That kind of makes more sense because you're not going to rob on I mean, you're not going to, by robbing a building, you're not taking the entire building with you, but it makes sense that you're getting something valuable from it. And uh, there, there are individual uh, special buildings like the, uh, what Coliseum. The, yeah, the Roman Colosseum, the Eiffel Tower, and Taj Mahal, and, and Big Ben. And so maybe they have something valuable in each one of them as you're, you're going through and getting to, to steal the buildings off the board. I think Despicable really. Me came out around mm -hmm. the same time as this, too. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's got a real Despicable Me kind of... Mm -hmm. I, this could easily be rethemed yeah. into, into <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would not buy it if they did. <laughs> Even at ninety percent off, uh, no minions for me. You're but not, you're uh, not a minions guy. But it does feel yeah. like it's got that kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting the way that you can play this out on each one of these these turns. It's got a fun mechanic as you're placing these little uh, these poker chips or whatever these geared poker chips around. And like he was saying that you you know you get to flip them over once there's three so there's uh, an order in which a lot, you'll want to place these and one of them even cancels out the one below it and so you kind of have like a little assassin agent that you're using so that's that's fun and then there's little missions that are underneath each one and you've got one character that will try to actually complete one of the missions if you can if you have what's required to complete a mission which usually isn't terribly difficult to have the requirements, but you're only getting one person that's completing missions. So there's there's that. But everything's giving you a little bit of uh, points or resources or scientists that you're using, and those scientists will let you do extra turns or get to kind of cheat your turns a little bit by getting to, to select from all of your, your face-down agents because normally you'll shuffle these agents and they only get to pick from the top of your shuffled stack. And that becomes a little difficult to shuffle when you've only got two. So I was yeah. just <laughs> jumbling them around up underneath my hands to try to pretend that I didn't know which one was which. It's the kind of Any thing. Mini, my, but... Yeah, it's the kind of thing. I almost wish I had a, a set of dice for it to, to roll them um, for each one of them, just because it's such a short stack to shuffle. But it's a it's a goofy game. Yeah, it it's is. A goof, it's goofy. Well, you know, it's. Uh, you were talking about these object. There's these objective cards uh, on the board as part of the, uh, you know, part of the setup for the board, mm -hmm. and you can get points from uh, one of your agents tries to complete an objective, and sometimes knowing what the prerequisites are mm -hmm. uh, is a little confusing. There's nothing in the book, no clarification for these. We were able to kind of logic it out, but it was mm -hmm. kind of funny that like we're sitting there trying to interpret what should be like a really simple symbol yeah and it's still through us a couple of times even yeah. on the beginner ones so yeah yeah not not the worst thing that i've seen in board games as far as like unclear roles but definitely a couple confusions i think we started out the game being a little uh, a little extra wonky on some of those rules but we we i think we tied it together by yeah. the end of it it definitely not, worth like a second look at yeah. it yeah you know? but wasn't it a hard teach this is the first time i've uh not the first time I've looked at the game because I did get the game myself. I, I pulled it all out. I think I even sleeved these little cards and I just stuck them back in the box and I, I haven't pulled it out since. But uh, <laughs> Sean taught it to me in about maybe five minutes. I don't know. It was, it was a very quick teach, uh, fairly simple game with some fun mechanics. Like I said, it's a, it's a goofy game. 
but th I think that the mechanics are enough to feel like it's enjoyable. Well, it says 14 plus, but this feels like a game you could play with younger folks. Yeah, at least 12 plus, maybe even 10, 10 Some, plus, yeah. Sometimes that comes in like with like choking hazards and <laughs> stuff. They have to put a certain age. Yeah, surely your kid isn't swallowing stuff at 10 years old that's just sitting on a game board. This would be really funny to explain if it came out of their stool or something. Yeah. <laughs> this little scientist man. We had to take Billy to the doctor <laughs> and extract game pieces. Uh. <laughs> One of these old buildings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would. Yeah, I don't want to uh, imagine having to pass the the yeah with the smoke the, the, nut, the nut and bolt building here. How about that Eiffel Tower? Yeah, no, no, thank you. Well, uh, you know, if it what would be the worst? If it comes one? out this way, it's not so bad, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it comes out this way, <laughs> yeah. it's not so uh, good. Like the fish hook syndrome. <laughs> I think Big Ben would be the easiest one to pass. Yeah. Well, what do you think is the, the thing that you enjoyed the most about this this game and the mechanics? Well, you know, I um, I like the theme a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I like the I like steampunk stuff, and I like um, I like being the bad guy building the big machine. I, I think that and it kind of gives you that feeling because you're mm -hmm. seeking out this little part, and then you insert you insert it and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you definitely need to take a look at like. Uh, pick the order of what you do with your machine first mm -hmm. and that's that's a like you like unlocking the uh the library can can cause your points that you get there to be double the amount they normally would mm -hmm. and that could come into play at the end of the game and boy there, there's a lot of different options that or mm -hmm. getting your firepower to a certain spot so you can take the building when you have yeah. an opportunity to so yeah i found that it's uh yeah you have to kind of balance when you're going to spend your resources and, and whatnot to get firepower because it doesn't really help you to have a bunch of firepower if you're not taking buildings so you every time a building is taken off the board then the secret service level moves up and so if this gets you, you can't take something if it's equal to you right it has, right, it has right. to be below you so you have a fire, your firepower meter is kind of following along with this, the secret service meter here. And so you have to be ahead of the secret service in order to be able to take th things. And, and I, f I found myself wanting to hold back on spending actions to go for firepower because I was like, well, if I'm not taking the buildings, there's no point in mm -hmm. doing that. But yeah, I, uh, uh, I really, I think the thing that I enjoyed the most was, was constructing the, the build it the um the the machine whatever it is mine was the the steam mole yours was the the wheeled fortress yeah yeah it's like so, a tank <laughs> mine was like something off of uh ninja turtles or, or sonic the hedgehog like a little dr <laughs> drill machine that gets to go through things so um but the fun thing about that like sean was saying is that you get to build these parts that are like they're like upgrades to your actions and and I, I found that pretty fun, especially some of the ones I saw very in the early on uh, that would that would help me a lot throughout the game. It was like, oh, I want to upgrade that quick so that that can start benefiting me throughout the game, not just at the very end. Yeah, got, if they ever redid this, mm -hmm. I, would, I think they should lean into that a little bit more because yeah. I, I like that feeling of getting gradually more powerful, that scaling of yeah. your... It, really, your engineer becomes like super, like a lot more powerful. Mm -hmm. I guess you can get firepower and other things and points and stuff too. But, but making him like unlocking his ability really helps a lot. Yeah, it's quick. It's a fast game. So, yeah. like, was how long did this took us? Under an hour, maybe. Yeah, it says it's a uh, forty-five to sixty minutes is what it says on the box, and I think that's about right. Yeah, I think that's what we played it at. So you you build your your machine almost faster than you would expect. Um, the game ends fairly quickly. Um, but it was, I mean, it's enjoyable for what it is. I told Sean it's like a filler plus. Yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like, it's almost like a game that you would just throw in between some other big games, but it's got enough going on in it that it's not just that super easy breezy. Yeah, you don't like want to relegate it completely to yeah. like, like just kind of a filler game. Mm -hmm. it, and I don't know, is that even insulting or I no, guess not. no, I mean I think fillers I think it's have kind their of place. like the length of it. Yeah, yeah, sort yeah, of. yeah. Fillers have their place and there's good fillers and bad fillers. And it's I think like the you said it's the length of it, you know, being close yeah. to an hour, that's kinda like fillers a lot of the time are around thirty minutes, so 
And it's not hard to get to the table, but there are like a lot of little components mm -hmm. that you could argue are necessary or not. I, I yeah. like the little building. I, for some reason, if a game has little tiny buildings in it, I just I want to buy it. They're little well, tiny buildings yeah. and boats and stuff. It's got a lot of toys in mm -hmm. here. And uh, bringing those to the out to, to the setup makes this take a little bit longer to yeah. put together than, say, like Herbaceous. Yeah, like oh, absolutely. Yeah. But, but the, the, the buildings themselves, though, are, are really nice for what they are. Um, they're um, rel relatively detailed in this kind of cartoony way, slightly, mm. slightly cartoony way. Um, but the, the first thing I said when I walked in and Sean had the game set, I was like, wow, this is really pretty. It's, it had a really nice table presence to it. It looked, it looked nice without being like too gaudy or anything like that. But the scientists themselves are pretty, pretty well made. These little busts that you have of all these, these little scientist characters that are all the same. But, um, but yeah, it looked, it looked nice though. The, the miniatures certainly give it a presence that it mm -hmm. wouldn't have otherwise. And Simon does a good job. I, I noticed on a lot of their games, something I really appreciate is that uh, the game board itself has pretty clear instructions for what how things work. Mm -hmm. uh, even your board here has has some little hints and tips for how uh, and reminders for how things work. So uh, once you have sort of a loose understanding, you can just refer to your player board and the board itself and know what you need. And the icon, I mean, it's a very very it's very very simple. Mm -hmm. It's maybe a page and a half of, of rules. And, and a lot of examples and stuff. And, and it's got the back page of the rule book, which has uh, a nice player aid that pretty much sums up everything else. So mm -hmm. you can teach this game uh, in about five five or ten minutes yeah. and then be playing. In fact, you just probably could just play one round and, and have it down. Yeah. I mean, I'll, most of the game is just like, I'm putting my token there. Then he'll put a token down, and I put a token down, and so on until we get to three, and then we're flipping it. Yeah, and even with someone who's like fairly AP prone like myself, uh, I didn't take too long to make a choice. You did yeah. good. This is this decent, is a great this is decent, game. This is a decent. Yeah, Sean's like yes, finally it's making <laughs> well, decisions. Well, uh, there's not a lot of decisions to make. I mean, it's no. kind of. I mean, you're lucky. Cause, because when you pull one of these guys off, it's got one thing that it can do, and then you're like, well, it's and you don't either, get to choose it. It either can or can't do. Yeah, you don't know if it's going to even get to do the thing, and it either can or can't. And there's just there's not that many options. You got five places you can put it, but really, when it comes down to it, you usually have like one or two spots that really make any kind of sense, and so it's pretty pretty quick. Well, and until you build up uh, a certain part of your board, you don't get to choose the one you get either. So they're just getting shuffled mm -hmm. and like, well, I'm playing this one. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's just like, okay, where am I going to put it? You know, and it's either, you know, you're lucky if you remember, even yeah. with only like five of these, you're lucky if you even remember where you put them all. Oh, right. I would, yeah, I could at most remember like one most of the time after I decided to play it out. Now, I mean, I've played this game a lot you could game it pretty quick and start to yeah. memorize where you're doing but just picking the game up if you haven't played it in a long time or if you've never played it yeah you're gonna be a little little slow on the the memorization but it is it is fun though uh not knowing what somebody else has put down because i found there's a lot of times where i was like i don't know if i want to put something on top of his stuff because he might have had that assassin character that just kicks off my ability so um so that's fun not knowing what the other saboteur, person saboteur, I think yeah. is what he is. <laughs> saboteur, yeah. So, so I yeah. I think that this is a I think this is a fun game. Mm -hmm. I think it's an easy game. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, it's it's going to be a bit lighter than than uh, than a lot of games I typically play, but it's still mm -hmm. it's a great one to pull out and uh, and uh, have a little uh, mischievous fun. Yeah, it's kind of heavy end of light. Yeah. Yeah, the heavy end of light. Yeah. 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 Or Filler Plus. Filler Plus. Filler Plus Special. That's not an F. That's not an F Plus. It's a. It's it's not a bad game. It's good. That's right. Yeah, and so. don't pay more than twenty five dollars. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, so. if you look in, on eBay right now, I bet you can find a whole bunch of these, mm. like pretty inexpensive. You can probably find them for around twenty twenty five dollars from all the people that bought it for seven dollars from, from. I think so. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think is like yeah. you know if I if I played this once and didn't want it, then that's what I would have put it out. <laughs> Retail values went down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're, they made they likely made a lot of these so I, yeah. I bet you I bet you could find it and if you do you should pick it up because mm -hmm. it's a pretty fun little game it is.
That's all we got today. If you'd like to see more board game reviews, click right here. Of course, you could subscribe to either of us. Our stuff is, is around. It's and <laughs> there's another video over here that YouTube thinks that you'll like a lot. Click like on your way out. I'd really appreciate it. Enjoy your games. We'll see you soon. Take care.